This is lesson 7-7, and it's fractions greater than 1. Today, our objective is that you, the students, will be able to write mixed numbers as improper fractions and improper fractions as mixed numbers. And this is a key skill that comes up frequently when you multiply and divide fractions. All right, so in order to succeed in this lesson, you'll have to know a few things. Number one, uh, you'll have to know the vocabulary. So when I say numerator, you know which part of the fraction I'm talking about. And when I say denominator, you know which part of the fraction that is as well. Um, and then you're going to have to recognize what is one whole. Uh, and one whole in fraction form <coughs> looks like this, something like 3 over 3 or 4 over 4. Anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, all of that equals 1. And if you can recognize that, uh, this lesson will be simple. All right, here's our notes for the lesson 7-11. How do I write a mixed number as, an, impro as an, an improper fraction? And how do I write an improper fraction as a mixed number? Again, bring your notes to class so we can review them tomorrow. Uh, in order to do this lesson, we're going to have to do a couple of things. Number one, I have to recognize what actually is a mixed number. And a mixed number is whenever you have a whole number and a fraction combined together, uh, you have a mixed number. So this mixed number is 2 and 1 fourth. And what you don't see, because we don't write it, but it's there anyway in an invisible form, is that there's a little plus sign there. So that's two wholes plus one-fourth, and that equals 2 and 1 fourth. Uh, and we just don't use the plus sign even though we have to know that it's there. All right, and then the other thing is uh, their whole number can be anything like 14 and 3 eighths. Anytime you have a whole number and a fraction, you have a mixed number. And if you're going to be writing these things on graph paper, your mixed number should be twice as big as your fraction. All right, now uh, let me just label that. That is a mixed number. We also are going to be taking on improper fractions. And an improper fraction is when you have a numerator that is greater than the denominator. So in this case, 16 is greater than 3. So we have an improper fraction there. And <coughs> we're going to label that as improper fraction. Um, what's really happening, though, when we have 2 and 1 fourth is we have to figure out how many fourths there are in this whole number. Well, I see one fourth here, but we'll have to figure out how many fourths are in two wholes. And so one of the things that uh, we can take a look at is if I have two wholes, and each one of those is uh, one fourth, and then I have one more fourth, which is one fourth, the total is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fourths. All right, and that's going to be our job when we turn a mixed number into an improper fraction. In an improper fraction to a mixed number, we have to figure out how many whole numbers are there in that improper fraction. So uh, we're going to be taking the 16 and figuring out, um, well, there's 16 of them, how many holes there are. So if I took three of those threes and made one whole, that would be one. Three again would make two, plus three again would make three, plus three again would make four. Running out of room, so I'm going to go to the other side. Three out of three would make five. So each one of these equals one. That's one, two, three, four, five. So your whole number would be five. And then how many uh, thirds do you have left? Well, I used 15. I had 16, so I must have one remaining. Now, you don't have to do all that in your head. I'm going to show you how to do it on the paper. All right, so our first task is writing a mixed number as an improper fraction. You may remember this from fourth grade, but we're going to go kind of in a C pattern. We're going to start on the bottom and go in that direction and rewrite our fraction. So we start at the bottom. That's the denominator of this fraction is a 3. We're going to multiply that by the whole number, so it's 3 times 3, and then we add in the remainder of whatever the denominator, I mean, excuse me, the numerator is. So it's 3 times 3 plus 2 equals 11. And uh, we're figuring out how many thirds there are, so the denominator stays the same. So 3 and 2 thirds becomes 11 thirds. Right? That's example number one. Now, we're also going to be doing improper fractions to mixed numbers. Uh, and in this situation, it's going to be a division problem. So if you can see that fraction bar as a division sign, uh, everything will be great. So it's 42 divided by 5. 
uh, and that would be uh, zero there and your division. This should be something that we're all good at by now. Eight, so that's your whole number up there. And then your remainder becomes your fraction part. So that's remainder two. And again, we're dividing up fifths here. So that two remem uh, is two fifths. That remainder means fraction part. So uh, 42 fifths written as an imp or mixed number is eight and two fifths. All right. Now, if you haven't taken out a piece of graph paper, do so now so that we can start uh, working together on this practice part. All right, so the first problem is 7 divided by 3 or 7 thirds. How many thirds there are or are there? So we're going to take the 7 and we're going to divide that by 3 and it should be 2. 3 times 2 is 6 and you subtract and you get a remainder of 1. And again, we're dividing up the thirds so it will be one third is left over. So we have two plus the one third, and so our answer is two and one third. All right, for the um, second problem, it's five over two, and we're gonna figure out how to write that as a mixed number, and the way we're gonna figure it out is five divided by two. <clears throat> did I set it up properly? I did. Okay, so um, if I multiply two times two, I get four with a remainder, and that, and that Remainder means that is our new numerator, and we're dividing up halves, so it's two and a half. Over here, 23 fifths, you divide 23 by five, and you get five times four is 20 with a remainder of three. So 23 fifths equals four is the whole number, and then the numerator comes from the remainder, four and three fourths. Oops, it's actually four and <coughs> three fifths erase. All right, moving on now to how to do mixed <coughs> numbers uh, and improper fractions. So let's take these mixed numbers and write them as improper fractions. Again, start at the bottom and multiply by the whole number. So that's 3 times 5, that's 15, plus the 2. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. So that equals 17. And then that um, denominator is going to stay the same, 17 thirds. Now, a question comes up all the time, well, do I have to turn that into a mixed number? And the answer is no, it was already a mixed number. You just keep it as an improper fraction. All right, moving on to number two. Start at the bottom, eight times six. So you multiply first, then add. Eight times six is 48, plus the three, that's 51. And we are finding out how many eighths there are and therefore the denominator stays as an eight. <clears throat> All right, moving on to number three. Start at the bottom, 16 times one is 16 plus the 15, and if you can't do that in your head, right here is where you should be working it out, and that's 31, so that equals 31 over whatever the denominator was, and that's 16. All right, if you have any uh, problems with these, you can uh, review the um, lesson again. But there's some common mistakes. Number one is not knowing what to do with your denominator. Um, <clears throat> so if we're going to be doing something like 12 over 5 and turning that into a mixed number, you would do 12 divided by 5, and some people are good at that by now, but they set it up correctly. 12 uh, divided by 5 is... 2, which gives you a remainder of 2, and then people say, well, what do I do with that 2? And they just say, okay, it's, it's 2. And then they put remainder 2 sometimes. Remember, that remainder is how many fifths you have left. So you take that 5 that you divided by, or the um, original denominator, and that becomes the same denominator. The 2 becomes your numerator. So it's not two remainder two, it is two and two fifths. All right, our task today is going to be uh, out of our homework book, H7-11, then we're going to do problems one through 15, just the odd problems. Good luck. <laughs>